the CPHR conference. I'm AJ Beaudry from MNP. I'm with Matt Burns, CEO and founder of the Global HR Collective. We're here to talk about artificial intelligence and technology and how it's shaping the future of HR. So Matt, at MNP, we've really seen the HR profession as a whole change drastically over the years. So where do you see the future of HR going? It's a big question. Here's where I would start. I think we need to spend more time talking about technology and data. It's not a traditionally comfortable area for HR professionals to discuss, but the foundation of HR in any organization today, for me, is technology and data. And for a couple of reasons. First is, it lays the foundation for automation of the tasks that really don't add value. So I talk to HR professionals every single week. Most of us did not join this profession to spend six hours a day behind a spreadsheet. But a lot of us are doing that. Yeah. And we're manually transacting. And it, from an organizational perspective, it's a really inefficient use of resources. You can do the work more efficiently, more accurately, and at less cost if you use technology and data. However, you need to overlay culture, engagement, strategy, employment branding, and that's where HR professionals really do add value. So it's that foundation of technology and data that frees us, liberates us, if you will, to actually stem the stuff that we actually want to spend our time doing. When you look at it from a whole picture, right, and everybody wants to talk about those mm. sexy aspects of yeah. AI and, and technology, but yeah. the realistic version is organizations aren't even close to being at that point yet. So what can the everyday HR professional do to take those steps to get a little bit closer to have their organization embrace and really take on that technology and analytics. You know, I'm really glad you said that because I work with clients now globally and when I started in the HR technology and analytics consulting space, I thought I'd be doing things like augmented reality <laughs> and, you know, chat bots for all yeah. this functionality. Yeah. And some companies are starting that journey, but a lot of companies are just moving from manual transactions mm -hmm. into technology yeah. or upgrading legacy technology systems. Systems. So the fact is that I think we're doing a disservice sometimes by talking about topics that people aren't ready for yet. So what I focus a lot of my time on now and a lot of my content, including my presentation later today at this conference, yeah. is around using predictive analytics to transform your HR strategy using practical yeah. language, practical basics. Yeah. So I think it starts with a couple of really simple tactics. The first one is, can you build a business case? And I do it very, very simply. So I start with, what's the biggest problem in your organization? Find the biggest pain point in your company right now and then put a value around that. Dollars, time, resources. Yeah. And that then becomes your opportunity, if you will, that money you have to play with. Mm -hmm. And if you can develop a solution to that problem for less money than you're spending to currently solve for it today, yeah. there's your business case. Yeah. So that basic money in, money out involvement to let, break that barrier totally. down a little bit, right? And it builds momentum because yeah. once you can demonstrate to the business that you can build that business case and deliver enterprise value at a reasonable cost point, you will get the license to innovate on the things we actually want to spend our time doing, but you'll never get there if you talk about features and functionality. Well, exactly. It kind of gives you that foundation, right? So how can they really break down those barriers to change that? Because HR is such a people-centric profession. Yeah. So where does technology fit in? And how do you get kind of outsiders to see that point of view? So I have a confession. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. We're gonna drop a bomb here. <laughs> I'm not a technologist. Yeah. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> I am somebody who understands the utility of those tools yeah. in the context of organizational culture. I leverage people all the time. Yeah. So when I was building a predictive analytics strategy, I leveraged a freelance data scientist to help me put together the framework around the math yeah. and build the programs and the formulas that we then leveraged to run our programs. When I was building a technology strategy, I met with my CIO yeah. and data architects and, and we them brought in, yeah. them in and involved them. I knew the problem and I knew what I wanted but I need their expertise to bring it to life. And I think that's such a big thing is bridging that gap yes. and kind of getting everybody together yes. to, to help push it, right? And that's what we do best in HR. Yeah. I mean, we're in a profession that frankly doesn't have any authority in most organizations. Yeah. We have to lead through influence. So building relationships should be our strength. And if you involve your CFO, your CIO, your data scientist on the front end of your journey and involve them in the problem, yeah. they'll help you with the solution. And then we can spend our time actually operationalizing it, which is where we do add value. Yeah. So if an HR professional, what's one thing they can do today yeah. to really add that value and to take that next step to get a little bit closer to that end goal? 
So I think it's being very, very clear on what your one problem is. Yeah. Don't try and boil the ocean. So again, you can read the Harvard Business Review articles on augmented reality. It's super cool. I yeah. would love to try it. Yeah. But most companies, like I said, are not there. Exactly. What is the one problem right now? Because the problem is the burning platform that you have to initiate requests for resources and time and money and exploration and pilots. And so get, get voice, right? exactly get very clear on what the current state problem is. Get very clear on where your organization is going, and then marry up your business case, tie those things together, yeah. and then use the opportunity to teach yourself. In my last organization, I didn't know HR technology to the degree I know it now. I used the opportunity for experiential learning to educate myself through that journey, and now I have the experience that I can provide to other organizations. So once they've taken that step, right, right and they have that information, what can they do to make sure that it's relevant and that they're using it efficiently and effectively? That's a great question. I think a lot of times HR professionals can get caught in this trap of inside voice, outside voice. Yeah. Like we're wired to keep things confidential. We don't talk about what we're doing. And to be fair, a lot of the things we work on, employee relations, are confidential. Yeah. Yeah. Data and technology is not confidential. Yeah. So I would say is get that group of key partners around the table before you start your due diligence. And then once you have your project rolling, have a continuous feedback loop to your organization where you can talk to people on the front line, cross-functional partners, build that two-way dialogue so that you treat the project like a pilot and not like it's done. It's done. Because so you're gonna constantly enhance it and refine yeah. it. So it's that continuous improvement, right? It's always totally. And it helps you build that foundation to get in the door and have that voice again, right? So in project management terminology, it's getting away from waterfall into agile, yeah. where it's 80% done, but it's really fast. And you iterate and you enhance. And if you negotiate that with your stakeholders up front and say, hey, we're gonna deliver some value really quickly, but it's not gonna be perfect. Yeah. And we're gonna ask for and take your feedback into account and refine and it. Keep rolling with it. They're totally okay with that. Yeah. But when you drop in, hey, we're done, and it doesn't work, that's when the finger yeah. pointing starts. Yeah. So when you look at you know, HR as a whole, where do you see the biggest area that technology is really gonna augment? <laughs> I mean, every area. Yeah. <laughs> I think where most organizations have the biggest potential today is in automating yeah. the manual operational administration. Mm -hmm. And then number two would be is leveraging the existing data you have today and operationalizing it. Yeah. Especially. We all have the data, we're yeah. just not using it. I've worked for multi-billion dollar organizations where we ran analytics from a spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just... Everything just input. We're all on the same journey. I think we need to know that. I think that when if you start your journey today, yeah. you'll be ahead of the majority of companies tomorrow. Yeah. So at the Global HR Collective, mm. you have some great mission and great initiatives kind of tied into that organization, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that and what you're doing with that. Second confession, I spent 20 years in the corporate world yeah. and 15 of those were in HR. And as I look back at my career, I found myself in a situation where I was leading a lot of large restructuring projects, yeah. which for the HR audience watching this video means I laid off a lot of people. Yeah. And I got to a place in my career where I asked myself, did I really want to spend the next half of my career being the hatchet man for big companies? Yeah. And I came to the conclusion that I didn't want to do that. And I went through a personal transformation that said, I really want to deliver more value back to society. And the best way for me to do that was to build an organization that leveraged the strengths and experiences I already had, yeah. but you did them in a different way. So I work with organizations now to make them more employee-centric and more healthy and save money, but I can actually do both. Yeah. Um, and the second thing that I do is, as we generate revenue, I give most of it away because I'm not materially driven. So I've learned that what makes me happy is solving problems and helping people. I get to do that now full time. So what we do the collective is we help organizations from a consulting perspective on technology, yep. on data, architecture, procurement, implementation, and then also I create content and thought leadership. And as we generate revenue, we give it to worthy charities around mental health advocacy and women entrepreneurs. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. We well, really appreciate you taking the time here today. Yeah. It was great chatting with Pleasure you. Pleasure meeting you. Thanks a lot. Take care.